Good morning, beautiful people. You gotta say it. <laughs> Good morning, beautiful people. You said it better. Plan of the day. It is a rainy, cloudy, cold day in Istanbul today. And right now it is 8.30 and we are on our way to the Blue Mosque because we're really hoping to kind of beat the crowds to one thing. And this is the line. And then after that, we're also going to go see the Hagia Sophia, which is another big thing. Oh, I almost slipped over. And have a beautiful mosque. Yes, to see here in Istanbul. And then after that, we haven't actually planned anything else for the day. So it'll probably be grab some lunch. I do need to do a little bit of shopping. We need some shopping, shopping to prepare for the winter that will last two days. But anyway, that's pretty much it that we got planned for today. Let's go. So, if you don't know, bring your own scarf or you can borrow one that I'm sure many other people have worn before you. So, we had to remove our shoes and my scarf keeps falling. So, status update. The, the mosque, or the blue mosque, is under major renovation so we couldn't see much. We couldn't see anything. Really. Couldn't see anything. <laughs> like you see a little bit of the ceiling, but not you can't really. get the grandiosity. It doesn't matter because literally right in the same square is the Hagia Sophia. So we're just walking across to go see that. It looks like there's a massive line for this one, which makes sense if no one's going to the Blue Mosque because it's not really viewable at the moment. The only um, thing is, in case you haven't noticed, it's raining. Oh yeah, it's raining. And the line is under <laughs> the rain. But so. Such is life, people. Yeah. Traveling at 360 days a year, you know, you end up having bad moments. What do we do the other five days? No, 365 days a year. Yeah, you said 360 days a year. Ah, three, yeah, there's five days we take off. Sorry, guys. <laughs> Don't mind us for five days, I'm sure. Hello, boys. Where are your shoes? Number 12. Don't forget them. <laughs> wow. It's pretty impressive. They've got these really nice mood lights. Also, I had to wear my hood because mom didn't bring a headscarf and you have to cover your hair, so I lent her mine. I'm wearing a raincoat. It's really beautiful. And I get so it's very busy inside the mosque, but you can imagine during a prayer they have this really beautiful soft mood lighting that you can see behind me and just stunningly decorated walls and ceilings and domes and everything is just absolutely gorgeous and this beautiful green like British racing car green kind of carpet which kind of gives it this grandiose feeling one of the things about this building, it was actually one of the very first buildings to adopt that style of dome on top and it apparently has been like changed the architecture, or the history of architecture because of the way that it's built. It is called a pendentive dome. I'm not exactly sure what that means, but I guess it's the specific style of dome. This is actually the third church to, or mosque, it was originally a church, now it's a mosque, to sit in this um, exact position because the previous two were actually destroyed. So this is the third one and I guess it's gonna stick around. Now something else that Jacqueline came across there is a column in this church that is called the wishing column or the weeping column because it actually is wet to touch 
and there is a hole in it which was apparently the hole of blessed by some saint and if you put your finger inside the hole and it comes out wet then all of your wishes and dreams will come true i guess if it comes out dry you get a pretty sucky life but we don't know exactly where it is it just says it's in the northwest part of the building but there's quite a lot of columns and i can't see any wet ones <laughs> so i believe maybe it's one of those yeah i think it might be over there because i doubt that they want people sticking their finger in the column yeah especially there's so many people here but i would like to know if my wishes and dreams are going to come true So we found the wishing column, but it's barricaded off and we cannot check if our fortunes will be great or bad. <laughs> We're just not gonna know. Well, you can see a lot of people have tried their luck. Yeah. So we're done with the Hagia Sophia and uh, we're making our way to what Jackie's mom saw as a water feature something. Basilica sister. This lady right here could use some coffee and it's really bad weather as I mentioned. Yeah, so let's go find some cover please. Coffee was delicious. We actually didn't record it, but you can imagine what a Starbucks coffee looks like. If you yeah. don't, it looks like this. <laughs> <laughs> so we're heading to the Basilica Cistern now, just to see a bit of water, because uh, the rain is not enough. <laughs> no, but it looks really cool. From the picture that we saw, it looks like something from a very famous movie. Called Harry Potter, I don't know if you've heard of it. <laughs> You're a wizard, Harry. I'm a what? No, we did, no, we did read it. We did read a fun fact about it. So I don't know if you can see because it's a bit dark. What are we looking at, Jacqueline? And if this does not remind you of the Chamber of Secrets, I don't know what will. There's a really cool uh, uh, trick of the eye where the ceiling is reflected on the water and it's making it look like the water is so deep and like you could dive into it but it's actually only um, a foot deep or something like that. But yeah, it's really beautiful. Trick of the eye, it looks cool. Okay, so the cistern, or the Basilisca cistern, was very cool. Highly recommend going. I still don't know a lot about that. Have to look up some information, but just a really cool thing to see and do. But now we are going to jump on the tram. We bought these metro cards yesterday, which gets you on all the trams and buses and everything around Istanbul. Pretty cheap as well. You have to pay 50, it's like 100 lev, no sorry, 100 lira and uh, each trip is like 7 lira so it gets you quite a bit um, and now we're gonna go over the bridge back to the other side of Istanbul because we want to go and try some very famous baklava which is apparently the restaurant that a lot of people recommend going to um, but in between that, we need to find someone for lunch as well. So we'll have a quick stop for lunch 
and then not too big though we need to save room for bottle though yeah <laughs> Jacqueline's trying to find us the best lunch spot in Istanbul possible not really just the closest one I'm starving What did you get? So I got what they said is ravioli and I just poked it with a fork but it's hard so and it's in yogurt I think and some meat so let's see and then the missus got gozleme with spinach spinach and cheese spinach and cheese and this is the leftover of uh, well, we've already half eaten but it's uh, cheese and beef So we finished dinner, or oh, lunch, sorry, finished lunch. We just crossed the street to what's been recommended as the best baklava place in Istanbul. It might not be that one, guys. It's the next one. So the way it works is there's quite a few of them, so don't get overwhelmed, but they thankfully have a menu of everything and you can even buy it in fives or per or there's a plate and the plate is 87 uh, lira and there's about nine of them I think otherwise unique the one we asked for was 12 lira so it's it's affordable hello uh, can Hi. I please have Mixed plate, two portions, two piece, yeah, three Turkish coffee. So we've ordered the baklava, we paid for it, and then you have to come over to the baklava counter, give him your ticket, and he will make a magic happen. It's actually not as sweet as you would think it is. It's sweet, obviously, but not like overly sweet. It's sticky, it's crunchy. I don't I haven't had that much baklava in my life, so I can't say whether it's the best or not. But apparently, it is. Well, I can definitely sell that to you better than she did. This is delicious. This is like. It just melts in your mouth. A little bit sugar, but not too sugary, overly like well, the nuts. Mm, yeah. And the pastry is very thin. Puff pastry is well done. Mm, I approve. Okay. So, Jacqueline's mom went home after the baklava. We are venturing to the Caflon. You know, our greatest sponsor. <laughs> No, we're going there because um, it's starting to turn cold and where we're going after this, I think the more we go to some morning adventures plan, it's going to be very cold. So I need to buy one of those poofy jackets that squish up super tiny. Yeah, and so uh, fit. <laughs> my one pair of semi-formal shoes happens to have holes. I just found out now because it's been raining and my feet are soaked. So that means investment in new shoes. So. New Oops. shoes and new jackets. Yeah. A few moments later. So this is just on the decathlon, and the music is banging. Thank you, Hilal. <laughs> Obviously, we've decided to do the trampolines back saw it. It was only like twelve dollars per person, yeah. so I couldn't really resist. So we're just waiting for our session to start. It starts in ten minutes, and then we get to go in and I guess do whatever we want. They yeah, gave us now. these really cool grippy socks, and uh, now we just need to prepare ourselves yeah. for a challenge. Yeah. Some stretches here.
That was a lot of fun. <laughs> I got through right now because we're having too much fun recording too much. Yeah, we did. But I finally learned how to do a front flip. Nice and a good one. Okay, it was a lot of fun, well worth the problem. Yeah, a lot of fun. I'm all sweating. And it's freezing outside, so, so that's yeah. not a good combination. <laughs> I have a question for you. Yes. What is happening right now? A little twinkle toes. My socks and my shoes are soaked. So I'm just gonna end the bin. Give me the socks though. <laughs> nice. Now pan away. Pan. Pan to the mosque from Harry Potter. So this is a. So it's the store of this magician guy. Oh he doesn't God. know he's a magician. You are so lame. <laughs> he's lame. His jokes are lame. 